impeccably timeless, uniquely personal, decidedly bold. GE Monogram built-in side-by-side refrigerators have always made an exquisite statement of style and craftsmanship. And now Monogram demonstrates that what's inside can be equally outstanding. Just open the doors and you'll get an immediate sense of design sophistication. Three light columns, two in the fresh food compartment, extend the full length of the refrigerator cabinet, illuminating every shelf and drawer. So you can locate just what you need without having to waste time sorting through jars and other items. LED lights on the ceiling of the cabinet and inside the bottom drawers further enhance visibility. But that's just the beginning. New Monogram side-by-side -side refrigerators have been designed to maximize fresh food storage. So if you think platters have no place in a side-by-side, -side, you're in for a big surprise. Party trays, platters, and even pizza boxes can all be moved in and out with ease. A new drop-down shelf provides additional space for a party tray or casserole dish. Not only is there room for large items on all six shelves, but also in the door bins. A gallon-sized door bin holds milk containers and pitchers. Adjustable door bins can be moved into one of two positions to maximize storage. At the top of the door, a dairy bin has a unique magnetic seal that locks in freshness and any possible odors. As an added storage convenience, a pull-out deli drawer on full extension slides keeps meats, cheeses, and other everyday foods within easy reach. On top of this, an overhead evaporator allows independent cooling of the fresh food and freezer compartments without any exchange of moist air or odors. In the fresh food compartment, an air tower between the light columns delivers fresh cool air to every shelf and drawer. An exclusive climate controlled drawer also plays an essential role in maintaining freshness. It precisely chills wine in minutes, thaws meat in hours, and allows you to select just right temperatures for specific foods, such as produce, citrus, and meats, all with a quick touch of the electronic controls. On the outside is the extra tall glass touch dispenser, activated by a unique proximity sensor. The subtle icons of the controls light up as you approach and switch off automatically when you walk away. Thanks to a GE Smart Water Filter, the dispenser provides you with fresh, clean tasting water. Enjoy it chilled or select cubed or crushed ice. Side-by-side -side refrigeration has never been so brilliantly and refreshingly innovative. It's yet another taste of leading innovation from GE Monogram. Today, consumers want more than a place to keep food and beverages cold. They want their refrigerator to complement their healthy and multitasking lifestyle. They want their favorite foods to stay fresh and delicious as long as possible. And they want a place for everything and everything in its place. GE is happy to deliver. Introducing French Door Refrigerators. What's wrong with being a little different? Rocking your own style. 
letting your chic flag fly. And mixing edge with elegance. Spicing it up. Absolutely nothing. Introducing Slate from GE. Sophisticated, modern, with a twist of verve and a dose of stunning. It's a timeless new finish that beautifully blends in to help you truly stand out. Life's a handful, and when you want to fill up with clean and fresh filtered water, it has to be quick and easy. GE's industry-exclusive hands-free autofill is the perfect convenience feature. The seamless stainless steel dispenser has a pull-out tray that easily fits large containers like pitchers, stock pots, and sport jugs. Just place the container on the tray, press autofill, and walk away. Four sensors automatically dispense fresh, filtered water until it's almost full. Multitasking at its finest. Big loads, little loads, white loads, colored loads, gentle loads, bulky loads, loads with lots of dirt, fast loads, sexy loads, smelly loads, wet loads, loads and loads, loads and loads, loads and loads of loads. We spend too much time in the laundry room. So GE not only gave their high efficiency top load washers and dryers enhanced performance, they made them incredibly flexible, large, and easy to use. So you can do laundry your way and finally take a load off. As we become increasingly aware of our personal and family's health and well-being, we're more conscious of what we put into our bodies. And clean water is an essential part. That's why filtered water is so important. Other refrigerators' filters leave behind trace pharmaceuticals often found in tap water, like progesterone and ibuprofen. But with GE's exclusive advanced filtration system, five key pharmaceuticals are removed. And the only thing that's left behind is fresh, clean, healthy water and ice. After you've finished a great meal, the last thing you want to worry about is whether your dishwasher can handle the mess. GE's most advanced wash system has it all taken care of. It combines three powerful full coverage wash arms, a hard food disposer to maximize wash performance in every cycle, a four pass element to heat water for washing and air for drying, and dedicated jets that focus on silverware baskets in the upper and lower racks, all working together to wash every load thoroughly and consistently. So even your dirtiest dishes come out impeccably clean, dry, and ready for the table. The amazing stain removal guide option on GE's high efficiency top load washers features special settings for today's most stubborn stains. Just select your cycle, choose your stain, and the washer adjusts to the perfect settings to get rid of it, down to the very last spec. Go from hopeless to spotless with just a push of a button. The new line of GE French Door Refrigerators features an upgraded filtration system to deliver a higher level of clean, safe water for drinking and cooking. But GE didn't stop there. To help ensure your water stays filter fresh, GE has made changing the filter every six months more convenient than ever by placing the filter in the fresh food door, an industry first. As opposed to other filters that take up valuable space in the refrigerator or are difficult to access, GE's filter in the door is a refreshing change that makes replacement fast and really easy. When you're faced with a real cleaning challenge, GE's industry-exclusive Steam Assist is the perfect solution. The option adds water to the cycle and creates a swirling vortex of steam in the wash tub. This gentle boost of cleaning power helps penetrate the fabrics to loosen and remove bullish dirt, stains, odors, and germs. So everything comes out good as new, looking great, and ready for another go around. If your dishwasher isn't filled to capacity, it doesn't mean you have to wait for your favorite and frequently used items. 
GE Dishwashers with the exclusive wash zones lets you wash when it's convenient without wasting water and energy. Wash zones allow you to choose just the upper rack, which can be adjusted to hold larger items like 10 and a half inch plates or the lower rack. You can also choose a steam pre-wash and sanitize cycle for either zone. Inside, the wash arms and dedicated silverware jets focus on the zone you selected to completely clean every item in its path. It's the perfect option when clean can't wait. When you buy the foods you love, GE understands you want them to be kept at the perfect conditions so they last longer and taste great. That's where the Twin Chill system comes in. It uses two evaporators to create two separate climates. One for the fresh food compartment and a separate one for the freezer. The fresh food evaporator creates and maintains higher humidity levels and helps food stay garden fresh longer. The freezer evaporator provides a dry environment for frozen foods to keep them at their best and free from freezer burn. Plus, the two separate evaporators keep strong odors from foods like fish and onions from transferring to the other compartment. Maximum freshness. That's the twin chill difference. Make life in the laundry room a lot easier and way more convenient with GE's Smart Dispense feature. Two reservoirs hold more than 100 ounces of both detergent and fabric softener, almost two months worth. Depending on the cycle and settings you select, the washer dispenses just the right amount at just the right time to ensure the perfect level of clean. The foods we store in our refrigerator are constantly changing. That's why GE's new French door refrigerators have flexibility built right in. For example, the temperature-controlled drawer allows you to store your favorite foods at just the right temperature so foods stay fresh and flavorful. With settings for meat, beverage, produce, cheese, and citrus, we take the guesswork out of proper food storage. So instead of settling for one temperature for every type of food and risking spoilage, you can choose the right setting with just a touch of a button and enjoy foods at their very best. A new GE dishwasher not only offers a sleek and stylish exterior, it also combines the affordability of a permatuft tub with the elegance of a stainless steel inner door. Available in both front and top control models, this attractive, durable combination helps ensure years of dependable performance. And with advanced insulation, these new GE dishwashers produce sound levels similar to a quiet library. So you can enjoy a dishwasher that sounds as good as it looks. By moving the ice maker out of the main compartment and into the fresh food door, GE's space-saving ice maker frees up valuable space for more fresh food storage. And to help you take even more advantage of this extra space, GE has added several convenient storage bins. Storing and organizing has never been easier. GE's French door refrigerators are full of ingenious ideas that are perfectly in sync with today's daily routines, making food storage more flexible and incredibly easy. The drop-down tray is a great example. It's designed to tuck away and out of sight, but when you need extra storage, it drops down with ease. Just push in the tabs and pull down. Voila, extra space in an instant. When you need to bring new life to your clothes and linens, GE High Efficiency Dryers make it really easy. Steam Refresh and Steam De-Wrinkle options use the power of steam to heat and relax the fabrics in order to remove set-in wrinkles. The dryer then cools the air to set the fabric back into place, smooth and pressed. Now there's never a wrinkle in your plans to always look good. Whether your household uses a lot of ice every day or only needs extra ice on special occasions, GE's Dual Ice Maker gives you more whenever you need it. With ice makers located down in the freezer compartment and in the fresh food door, Dual Ice makes and holds up to 10.8 pounds of great tasting ice. That's enough for 50 drinks. Enjoy the convenience of the right amount of ice at the right time so you never run out. 
cashiers. Hi, I'm Chef Joe Castro. And I'm Chef Brian Logston, and we're at the Monogram Experience Center to talk about our new toy, the new Pro Range. We love this guy. Exactly. You know, I've been cooking for about 28 years, and anytime I got a new piece of equipment, it was like a new toy. I couldn't wait to play with it. I didn't leave it. I wanted to use it all the time. But what Monogram has done, they gave us enough time to get to know this range. We've had it for months now. We've had a lot of fun with this guy, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about it, but let's look at it first because it is a good looking piece of equipment. You know, right away, to me, it's all about fit and feel. You know, you get a sense of it, like when you go buy a new car. I don't see any screws in this thing. It's all been well taken care of. Seams, don't see them, do we? Right, they're at a minimum. And you know, when you're talking Pro Range, there's some things that you're looking for. It's all stainless steel, which is great. It's big. It's beefy looking. It says, you know, I can take whatever you want to throw at me. So we're going to throw some stuff at it today. That's for sure. Right. And it's all new. Again, you know, the burners, new. Infrared grill. It's a beast. I love it. How about that griddle? The griddle is, uh, it's great. It's even cooking. It's everything we look for when we, when we look for a griddle. It's just a great piece of equipment. Another nice touch is the lights. It makes everything easy to read, and they're just a lot of fun to have. You know, talk is cheap. Why don't we start using this? Let's see what it'll do. All right. All right, it's time to cook and eat. One of the nice features about the Pro Range is low simmer. We can keep things at 140 degrees. What does that do for us? Well, we need to be gentle a lot of times when we're melting chocolate. You can't overheat chocolate or it'll break. Or if I want to hold a sauce while I'm finishing a piece of meat, it gives us that ability for a long period of time. Chocolate, though, it's my nemesis. I love it. And as a pastry chef for years, I've worked with chocolate a lot. And two things, bad. One, I tend to get this stuff all over me. I just can't help it. It's, it just, it, it's attracted to my clothing for some reason. The other thing is, I love to eat it. I really can't afford the calories, but we'll set it here, we'll let it simmer, let it melt down slowly, we'll see what happens. I want to allow it to melt, Brian, so, so you don't eat it, I'll just keep it right over here. Probably the best. Now, gentle heat is very important, but we need some high BTUs to really get something to sear, and that's what we're looking for when we get in a skillet. I've got some olive oil here. We're going to sear some shrimp to get some caramelization going. Caramelization means flavor. So let's get some oil in our pan. Now when we see a little whiff of smoke coming up off this olive oil, you know it's time to saute. So we're going to take our shrimp, see a little bit of that happening? We're going to gently lay these in, one at a time. Now saute means to jump. If you don't have high heat, they won't do it. The other uh, nice thing about this, all of the grates on the Pro Range flip over to hold a wok. So we've got a wok. I'm going to turn this on extra high. We want to walk really, really good and hot. We've got some onions, some carrots, we've got some mushrooms. We're going to cook up a nice stir fry. We'll go to those shrimp. They're looking good, by the way. What are you going to do with them? Well, I'm going to finish them with a load of mirin, soy sauce, garlic, and celery. And as you can see here, when we put this shrimp in here, it didn't shock this pan down because we have that power. So we're getting a little caramelization. Let's turn them over. To that, we'll add a little bit of celery. Now we're getting a little caramelization in the bottom of the pan. You can still see it's doing its work. A lot of vapor coming off. We're gonna add a little bit of garlic. Doesn't take it long. Just takes seconds to wake it up. And somehow we have to stop that from burning. So we're gonna get some soy in here and deglaze this pan. See all that coming off? That's the power you maintain when you have a pro range. A little bit of murin. And now I gotta let this just reduce a little bit. I'll probably get these shrimp right out of here. I'm starting to smoke a little bit. I've got my olive oil. And just like on the shrimp, you're gonna see this guy start to smoke. So we're gonna go into our hot oil. We're gonna go in with some yellow onions. 
We're going to follow that up with some julienne carrots. Now we're cooking very, very quickly on the wok. So we're going to go in with our mushrooms. Go salt ahead and get a little salt and pepper. Thank you, sir. You're I appreciate welcome. that. Yes, sir. Now I can add garlic to this early, but because this wok is so hot, I run the risk of burning the garlic. And burning the garlic is just, just bad and it's bitter. So I'll go ahead and add it in now. Brian, my sauce is beginning to get nice and sticky. That's a very good. quick reduction. So I'm going to add my shrimp back into it. And they'll be like glazed with mirin and soy and all those flavors. It's had time to kind of build. All right, now I've got some broccoli rabe. It's just a, a leafy vegetable. It's going to go great with this. You could use asparagus. You could use regular broccoli. You could use snow peas, whatever you want. I'm going to add a little sauce. Now this is a... Uh, it's kind of a soy, a sweetened soy sauce, maybe like a teriyaki. Uh -huh. We're going to add a little bit to that in there. What's that going to do? Give us some steam It's going to give us some steam. So it's going to help to steam that broccoli rabe and cook it down a little bit. We don't want to cook it down completely. We want a little bite to it. Right. We want some crispness. Now I'm going to season the broccoli. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. We use uh, fresh ground pepper only around here. Exactly right. You know when you have pepper ground, you get actually the flavor and the heat. We've got a little bit of oil, maybe about three quarters of an inch in a pot. We've brought it up to about 350 to 375. And we've got some rice stick vermicelli. These are rice noodles. You can get them in various sizes. These are about the smallest. They're very, very tiny. So you've got to have your noodles. You've got to have something to get them out quickly. And you've got to have a bowl to put them in. We're going to drop them into our hot oil. They're going to fry right up, puff up, a couple of seconds, and we are done. This will make a great bed to serve our shrimp on. We'll season these up. They are edible. A little salt and pepper. All right, why don't we start with some noodles? Let's put our noodles down right in the center of the plate. Now we need our veg. Let's get that broccoli kind of centered beautifully. That's looking great. Now we'll just layer our shrimp right on top there. Maybe a little bit of sweet chili sauce, Brian. I know how you love it. Always a nice addition. And what about some chives, maybe? Just a few chives. You could use scallions, chives, whatever you like. That's all you need. Now, a true test for any grill is a steak. We all think about steak houses when we get on a grill. We've got one the way we like them, Brian. How That's thick a, is that? It's a hefty piece of meat. So we seasoned it with a little salt and pepper. We've got it at high, which is 14,000 BTUs. That's pretty much what steak houses use. And we're gonna set it right on the grill. We're looking for a good sear on the outside, and we're gonna get that with 14,000 BTUs. See all that vapor coming off? It's doing its work. But I want a little more with the steak besides just the meat. Why don't we grab that bowl and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. We need a little bit of maybe some mushrooms. All right. I got a little fresh uh, rosemary here. I love grilled zucchini. And we grill a lot of peppers around the Castro house. So we've got some uh, seasoned oil. This has got a little pepper, some red pepper flakes, and some garlic. All right. Now, while Joe's tossing those around, we're going to have some roasted vegetables, a nice New York strip, we need a little grilled cheese sandwich. So I've got a, some of that olive oil again. I'm going to brush some bread. And we've got some brie cheese over here. I love a grilled brie sandwich. I do too, Brian. Now, what we want to do is we want to sear those juices in a steak. If we get that quick caramelization, it won't rush out. And that's what we're allowing this to do. So we'll turn our steak over. See those marks, see that caramelization? That's what we're looking for. We'll get it seared on this side. 
And this is a grill that not only keeps super high temp, I mean 14,000 BTUs, it can go down to 10, and with vegetables, you got to be a little more delicate. So let's turn it down. What do you say? Let's turn it down. We don't want to burn the vegetables. No, sir. Something Monogram set out to do when they built this grill, they wanted it to be useful throughout the entire piece. Many times, you know, you've got hot spots. You go out to your outdoor grill, hot spots. You got to manage it. This, they put a lot of work into making sure every bit is useful. With a large infrared burner, that helps accomplish that. So we've got good even heat. I'm about ready for some grilled cheese. We've got our bread and our brie. I'll just put these guys together. And I'm going to go right here. Sounds good. I got two pieces here. That'll be mine. <laughs> Very well, Brian. I'm on a diet anyway. When you're cooking a steak, many times people torture it. They flip it around all the time. Let the juices come through the center, relax. You only want to turn a steak about four times while you're cooking it. Now take a look at these vegetables here. If we were burning these, actually charring them, getting all that burnt flavor on there, it becomes bitter. That's a danger anytime you grill, but when we can adjust it down, we get that wonderful grilled flavor without brutalizing all this vegetable. All right, our grilled cheese is looking good. We're gonna go ahead and get those off and let them rest. We'll set them right over here. Cool. Our vegetables getting close. Our steak, it's got a couple more minutes. Now take a look at this veg. You know, if we were to start at high temp, it'd all be burned. Nice caramelization. Right. Building a flavor. It's all about building a flavor. We'll get the zucchini off. We'll move those over to our board. So looking good. Mushrooms. Wow, I love, you know, really, I could eat mushrooms in place of steak, Brian. These I'm are sorry ready. for that. I know you hate mushrooms. I love a big piece of beef. <laughs> Peppers. How those look to you? Those are looking good. Exactly. Notice that we have this spread out all over this grill. There's even one in the corner over here, and it looks the same. There we go. One more on the steak. All right, our chocolate's been sitting here for a few minutes. It's melting nicely, but I want to give it a little stir just so we melt evenly. Look at that. We're not scorching. This could sit on here for hours in this state. All right. Did I get any on me? I'm good so far, I think. Okay, Brian, the steak's ready. Brian, we're going to serve this on a little bit of mine Himalayan sea salt. Yeah, this is a, uh, a cool serving dish. I love it. I'll put a little veg down. Our grilled cheese. Let's we'll set those guys right there. All right, where's the knife? Let's eat. All right, let's do a little cooking on the griddle now. A good griddle, you ought to be able to do pancakes, bacon, all that good stuff. With the monogram griddle, it's like good cookware. We've taken the griddle and made it multiple layers. We've got aluminum on the bottom, 18,000 BTUs. It spreads that uh, flame out, that aluminum. The stainless steel makes it easy to clean, makes it also more even. So, we ready to cook some scallops though? Well, let's see if he'll do the scallops. I've got some olive oil I'm going to start with. A little bit of oil down. We've seasoned the scallops. And let's get them searing. We've got a little bit of a corn cake with some chives in there. You hit me with a little bit of that I oil. I sure will, Brian. We're just going to put a little bit down. All right, I think two will do us. Two looks good. Why don't you grab that ham over there and we'll start seasoning the front of it. With a little bit of that oil, I'll just pull it towards us. Drop it right there, Brian. Got it. Now we'll let that cook for a minute. We've got some other ingredients. We've got some onions. We've got a little julienne pea, some tomatoes, 
and uh, garlic. It's kind of garlic kind of runs through all of our dishes. It seems like right, it's like a river. Right. Just flows through it all. All right. You ready for some onion? Yeah. Put it on there. Get a little bit of onion. See, we're building a little caramelization on that ham right there. Should be getting a little on the scallops. Give me that spatula over there, Brian. You got it. Let's see what they look like. Building flavor. Look at that. I'm going to add some peas there while you're flipping. All righty. And we'll hit that vegetables with just a little, little salt. Our ham has got some salt to it. And we'll go with a little bit of pepper. Oh, that's looking good. See how even that's cooked over this? The entire pancake, Brian? Very important. That's what you get when you get that sandwich of aluminum spreading out that heat over the stainless steel. Right. So I think we need a little bit of garlic. I'll wake it up with some heat. It looks like we need a little moisture just to wet this down a little bit. How are we going to do that? We got some tomatoes. Right. So when we go ahead and get these pancakes off. We're looking good. You grab a plate. All right, we're ready. We'll set this to the side. Our vegetables are getting close. Our scallops are going to take a couple more minutes. Again, we're just letting these things do their thing. Turning them as little as possible just to keep those juices centered so it stays nice and fresh. Now, Brian, we're known for making messes. And when we make a big mess on our griddle, we can slide all that grease right into this grease well. Right. Monogram has uh, really thought this griddle and the grill as well. They've thought it through. One of the toughest things about working on a griddle, and part of the reason why people don't like to use them that much, is they're hard to clean. With the monogram griddle, we take our, our debris, our leftover, our oil, we wipe it all into our grease trap. We can pull the trap out, wash it, wipe our grill down. We're ready to go for the next time. You know, same with the grill here. You know, you've got these little lines going through the grill. If you're using something really heavy and fatty, it'll actually travel down that line, go right into this grease well. It's very thoughtful. Very good thought. We'll leave two on the griddle, just for us. We'll plate two as well. All right. How's that look? That's looking good. We can give it a little drizzle of olive oil just to kind of finish. And that's our dish. That's a darn good looking dish. All right, now every Pro Range has got an oven, and the Monogram 48 is no different. We have two ovens. We have a large oven called the Caterer's Oven for full-size sheet trays, large cuts of meat. We also have an everyday oven, which is for every day. It does most jobs we use every day. The problem comes in that most ranges, the little everyday <laughs> oven is kind of just left out on its own. It doesn't have quite the features that the larger oven has. But with the monogram, we've taken that away. Let's take a look. Now, Joe, my oven has got full extension racks. Hey, Brian. Very nice. My oven has got a convection fan. Yep, check. I've got a place for a meat probe. Check. How about self-clean? I can self-clean with my racks in. I can self-clean cook in that oven at the same time. The same features, one just a little bit smaller, like you and me. <laughs> exactly. All right, I'm ready to put some cookies in. How about you? Well, let's do that. Let me close my oven up. Bring All on right. the cookies, my friend. Well, we got three different kinds here because we like three different kinds. I got chocolate some chip. chocolate chip. One. We got some chocolate, white chocolate chip. Boy, this makes it easy, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I love these extension racks. And we've got peanut butter. 
My favorite, 400 degrees, 10 minutes. We gotta let them cool first though, okay? Maybe. All right, we're ready to go. Now while those are cooking, why don't we go ahead and think about that everyday oven? All right, what are we gonna do? I wanna do some lamb. Fundamentals, Brian, we gotta start with salt and pepper. Caramelization is where the flavor comes from, right? Right, and we're gonna use our grill to do that. Just set that lamb right on top. Get, we'll a get nice a good caramel sear. layer going. Now we're going to serve this lamb. We're going to kind of make it Mediterranean. We've got some uh, artichokes, some pearl onions, sun-dried tomatoes, Kalamata olives, and a little parsley. This would be great. We'll toss this all together and let it roast. I think our cookies are getting ready to come out of the oven as well. So while Joe's finishing searing that lamb, I'm going to go ahead and pull these guys out. Beautiful. Oh, those are looking good. Now we have to let those cool, right? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> oh, darn. They have to cool a little bit. All right, now I'm going to mix up our uh, accompaniments for the lamb. Like I said, we got our artichokes. We're just going to get all of this in our bowl. Sun-dried tomatoes, good handful of those. I love that intense uh, tomato flavor. Some kalamatas. A lot of parsley, a lot of parsley. Salt and pepper, of course. Fundamentals. Fundamentals. We've now, got a nice little sear in our lamb, so I'm going to go ahead and set it in here. All right, we're looking good. Now, we could go just olive oil on, uh, on all of our vegetables here, but why do that when we've got a little bit of duck fat that we've rendered? A lot of extra flavor. Looking good, we'll give that a toss. And we're just going to pour that right around our lamb. You know, think about it, all those flavors, just perfuming that lamb as it cooks. It's going to be beautiful. All right, we got our meat probe. Right here, Brian. What temperature are we look, looking for on this lamb? I'm going to cook it about 135. 135 sounds good to me. All right, so we got the oven preheated to 375. Joe's going to plug the probe in there. As soon as I get this probe in, Brian, you're going to see something pop up on the display. Right, it's going to say, hey, you plugged a probe in. So we're going to turn this to 135, set it. When it reaches that temp, it'll let us know. All right, the oven says we're ready, Brian. We've reached 135. It's smelling very good. I'm going to disconnect the probe and bring it to you. Mediterranean lamb. We are. Now all we need to do to finish this is a little grimolata. That's uh, fresh parsley, lemon zest, and garlic. We'll just sprinkle a little bit of that over and around. We'll let it rest for about 10 or 15 minutes. Kind of give those juices time to go back in and then uh, it's time to eat. All right, imagine it, Brian. It's Thanksgiving morning and we've got this range top just covered full of food. But down below, Check it out. Big old turkey. Now the true test of a range is how well it can handle a big old bird like our 18 pound friend here. Joe looks like it's doing a good job. In fact, I think we got room for three French hens, two turtle doves, and maybe even that partridge. <laughs> well, why don't we close it up and we'll let this big old turkey finish. That sounds good. All right. We're going to do some Asian glazed salmon. And what makes it Asian, Brian? It's the spices. It's not that you're Asian or anything. It's the spices and the soy and the brown sugar, and it's going to be delicious. We're ready to go in. We're going to broil it, and you can do it at high or low. We've got it on high. We're going to go on the middle rack. Pull that out. Now, how long is this going to take? Probably about 12 minutes, Brian, until really the way you like it. Sounds good. All right, the salmon, let's see. It's got a beautiful candy coating on it now. 
We'll close this up. And I like a little bit of raw veg against my salmon after this, so we'll put a little leek, pretty traditional. A little bit of carrot and sesame seeds. All right, this dish is done. How's that salmon looking, Joe? We're ready to eat, Brian. It looks good. I tell you what, we threw a lot of work at this range today. We melted chocolate on low simmer, we sauteed shrimp, made a stir fry. We did a steak, grilled cheese sandwich, and uh, vegetables on the grill. We did scallops and vegetables and a uh, corn cake on the griddle. Lamb, cookies, salmon, and a great big turkey. That is a lot of work. You know, it is a lot of work for a range, but I gotta tell you, I've been standing next to one of these for 28 years, and I can honestly say it's the finest range I've ever cooked on. <laughs> I'm Joe Castro. And I'm Brian Logston, and we're here in the GE Monogram Experience Center. And we're talking about the Advanium Oven. It's a speed cook oven. It's four ovens in one. It's also a true European convection oven. It's a warmer proofer. And it's a fully functional microwave. But that doesn't explain how we got to all this great food. It uses a combination of halogen lights, heating elements, true European convection and microwave. So the halogen lights, that gets our searing on the top and our browning. Right. We have that heater on the bottom. We get more browning there. But what's this true European convection? Well, it's an element, heating element, around a fan so that the movement of the air is always warm and moving in the cavity. And then we hit it with just a little bit of microwave when we need it to help cook the interior of our food. So that's where we can get up to eight times faster cooking than your conventional oven. With no preheating. It has over 175 menu items. And 30 custom that you can enter yourself. Now that we know what the Advanium is, let's see what it does. Let's start with a T-bone steak. Sounds good to me. I love a T-bone. Let's go. This oven does great steaks, and we've got a big job. We've got T-bones to cook. Each steak, a flight, and a New York strip. My favorite. Which one do I get? Maybe both. Both, my friend. Let's show them how we're going to cook them. All right, let's get this in the oven. And we're gonna cook it using the speed cook function. We're gonna start by hitting speed cook. All right, we're gonna scroll the meats. Now, we're making a T-bone. We don't want it well done, we want it medium. Not a half inch thick, not three quarters, a full one inch thick, it's a manly steak. We've got two steaks, we could do up to four if we wanted. We're gonna cook with the upper lamps. That's the halogen lamps, that's the light in there. We're gonna use that 100% of the time. There's also a ceramic heater in the bottom. We're gonna use that 100% of the time. So I'm getting caramelization. I'm getting what I look for in a good steak. You want good caramelization, but you wanna cook that interior from top to bottom. So to accomplish that, our microwave is set at 20%. Now that means it's on 20% of the time. Microwave is great for bringing things to the boiling point. That's as hot as it can get. So at 20%, we'll cook that steak from top to bottom to medium. We also have our convection fan kicking 100%. So we're gonna get a good sear, a good overall cook. We're ready to start. Go ahead, Brian. So with upper, lower microwave and convection all working together at the same time, what kind of time savings am I looking at? If I was on an outdoor grill, I'd have to preheat it then I'd have to worry about cooking it, and that would probably take about 12 to 18 minutes. If you're doing it in an oven, same thing. It's gonna take extra time, and you've got to preheat. With this, again, no preheating. It's looking good, and we're moving quick. Look at that, Brian. The oven is telling us, turn food over. Right, now it's gonna be a little smoky when you're cooking and when you open this door. That's to be expected. We've got fats rendering off of this beef. It's gonna get a little smoky. And you're gonna to have to be a little careful. This is all very hot inside. It's hot. So I'm gonna pick one of these up. Notice the caramelization. Turn it over. Back in, press start. Should be ready in two minutes. All right, we're ready to go. 
These steaks are ready. They smell good. They look good. Set them down right there, Brian. Now, if we cut into it now, we're going to get a lot of that juice running out. So let these rest 10 or 15 minutes before you serve them. You know, Brian, not everybody loves a great T-bone steak. Well, obviously, we love a good T-bone steak, but sometimes the kids want something a little bit different. So what are we going to do for them? My kids love grilled ham and cheese. Grilled ham and cheese is good. Chicken fingers, very good. Right now, we got some grilled ham and cheese we're going to do in the Advanium. So we're going to drop this in. So we've got it on our metal tray. Let's get it going by hitting speed cook. There we go. All right, we're gonna scroll to sandwiches. We've got a grilled sandwich, which we're gonna do. Not cheese, we got meat and cheese. Not one sandwich. How many do we have? Not two, we have three. All right, it says to use the metal tray. We're already on, we're ready to go. All we gotta do is press start. So we got a minute and a half left on these sandwiches and it's telling us, turn me over. So we're going in. We're going into a hot oven. Oh, they look good already. <laughs> Let's go ahead and turn these over. Bro. All right. I got the spatula. Flip them over. Nice grill marks. Oh, they smell good. Back in, close the door, press start, and they'll finish cooking. Our sandwiches are done, but you always have to remember when reaching in the oven, they're going to be a little hot. Right? It can be a little hot. Check but those out. Man, do they look good. We'll cut into it. These things are crunchy, toasty on the outside, hot in the center. It's a great ham and cheese sandwich. The kids are going to love it if it makes it to the kids. You know, Brian, there's nothing like a sandwich when you're hungry, but ours are mysteriously gone. I know. I think you got a few crumbs left on you there, buddy. <laughs> so we polished off the sandwiches rather quickly, and the kids, I think, are still hungry. We won't tell them, but we got some chicken fingers. We probably ought to put those in the oven. So. All right. So the sandwiches we used on a metal grill tray. Right. These are on just the metal tray. No grill. Let's put them in. Let's try not to eat them this time. So in we go. Start by using speed cook. Speed cook again. I'm going to scroll to poultry, and we're doing chicken tenders frozen, three to four servings. It always seems like we're using the maximum servings this guy. I don't know why. We love leftovers. We Brian. love leftovers. So three to four servings. It says use the metal tray. That's what we're using. We're ready to press start. Off to the races. Brian, the oven says it's optimizing. What does that mean? Optimizing is the guys here at GE, they're much smarter than a couple of cooks, I gotta tell you. And what they've done is they've taken into account the incoming voltage that this oven has seen. So sometimes you can get a little bit of a swing in, in uh, time. So in different environments, wherever you are, it's gonna take that into account and adjust for it? Exactly. You may only see a few seconds, you may not see anything at all. It all depends on what is coming in at that particular point in time. It's a nice feature. Pretty smart. Very smart. After a meal like that, I need something sweet, Brian. Joe, after any meal, I can use something sweet, but I can use something sweet any time of the day. So <laughs> to that end, I've made some cinnamon rolls. So we're going to proof these guys because I made these homemade. Now, if you go to a, a store-bought cinnamon roll, you may not have to proof them. You can go directly on the metal tray and right in for speed cook. These, we're going to let them proof. Luckily, we've got a proofer. Let's take a look. So we'll hit warm proof. All right, the rolls are going in. We're going to scroll to proof bread, and we're going to start up. It's going to give us a time so we know how long it's been in there. You may want to check it every once in a while just to make sure you're proofing correctly. And then when these are ready, we're going to speed cook them. All right, these cinnamon rolls have got to be done. What we're looking for is double in size. Let's right. check it out and see if we're there. Oh, yes, we have reached double in size. 
are ready to cook. You said they're ready. They're ready. They're ready to cook, Joe. Oh, sorry. All right. Now, the cool thing about this is not only do we have a proofer here with the Advanium, but we have an oven, and we don't even have to preheat. So we're ready to go. Let's just put it in. Once speed again, cook. Speed cook. Now, we're going to scroll to cinnamon rolls. Well, I'll eat them any time of the day. I will. But we're going to scroll to breakfast because that's generally where the average person would eat a cinnamon roll. So we're doing there. We're going to rolls. They're not caramel rolls, although those would be good. Cinnamon rolls. We're going to do ours as a mini. They're a little smaller. Okay, so we've got that. We've got our rolls in our pan directly on the metal tray. We're ready to go. I'm going to press start. Nine and a half minutes, you're going to have cinnamon rolls. Can you wait that long? I can. Okay. Right. With these homemade cinnamon rolls, we want the support of that casserole pan, so we're in that, but we're directly on that metal tray. You got to make sure whatever pan you use in here, that it's directly on a metal tray. So you get real nice oven performance. Right, a normal function of the Vanium oven, the lights are going to cycle on and off. Right. So you notice that here, our upper lights were set at three. Now what does that mean? It's based on time. So if we have something that's going to cook, let's say for 10 minutes, that means that our lights are going to be on for three of those 10 minutes. It's on 30% of the time. So it's not unusual for us to see the lights come up and go down throughout the cooking process. Five, four, three, two, one. Cook Cinnamon time rolls. completed, my friend. I am so very excited about this. The oven this. is hot. Oh, they smell good. Check these out, man. These are like my mother made them. Beautiful brown. Well, they were cooked in an oven. So the only thing that's going to make these better, hold on, is a little bit of icing. Got to have icing for cinnamon rolls, I'll wait right? for icing. I'll wait for icing. All right. So I've got a little bit of a uh, brown sugar caramel here to go on top. All right. Oh, this is going to be so good. Just let it melt down in. Oh. So what we got here, the hot brown? Yeah, the hot brown is an open-faced turkey sandwich with a little bit of tomato and cheese sauce on top. Well, we're doing it as a casserole because the Advanium has the capacity for a 9 by 13 casserole dish. So we're going to put it in on the metal tray. Joe, how are we going to cook it? Well, you won't find hot brown in the 175 recipes in here. It's, a, it's unfortunate. But... They thought of that. Okay. We're going to use custom speed cook. So let's hit that. All right. What's our time? 10 minutes. 10 minutes. All right. I'm going to scroll to 10 minutes. All right. And I'm going to press that. So our upper light settings. It's going to be at nine. Nine. What does that mean, Brian? That means that our upper lights are going to be on 90% of the time. Correct. Lower. We're talking about our heater in the bottom. Right. We've got our ceramic heater. I want it on 80% of the time. 80%. You got it. Our microwave power. I want to be very gentle. Very gentle. 30%. 30%. Why? Because our cream sauce can break if we boil it too much. So 30% is good enough to heat that through. Right. Convection. We got the convection fan. I want all 10 of it, my friend. All 10 of it. Bring it all. All right. So we're ready to go. Now we've got that set. Ready to press start. In 10 minutes, we'll be eating hot brown. All right, we're down to just a few seconds left. So the hot brown is one of those things that, you know, I could eat it every day, but I probably shouldn't. But what if I eat it once a week? Do I have to go in and put all these manual settings in every single time? You don't have to, Brian. There's 30 custom recipes you can program into this. So when you want to go back and cook that hot brown, all you do is go back to favorite recipe, start it up. So I've got 175 recipes already in the Advanium. I can go up to 30 custom recipes. So I just bring up hot brown, press start, I'm ready to go. And as a chef, you got to love that. I got to love that. It's ready now. Now, Brian, this is good enough to eat the way it is. Well, it is, <laughs> but kind of one of our top five ingredients is bacon. There it is, my friend. The Advanium is a fully functional microwave, and we did cook the bacon under that feature. We're oh. just going to put it all over the top. That's just wrong. A little That's parsley. Wrong. A little vegetables in our life. Very good.
What do I like better than a pizza? Two, two pizzas. pizzas. Two pizzas. In order to do two pizzas, we're going to go in convection bag, and we got to have a rack. A wire rack, Brian. Now, you can only use this in convection mode. Right. Not microwave, not speed cook, just convection. So we're going in. Four little tabs. We're going to use our metal tray for our pizzas, but our metal tray is not in right now. Just the wire rack. Let's show them how to program it. All right, let's go to Convection Bake. All right, we're going to press our dial. Now, we can go all the way down to 250 degrees in Convection Bake, but for pizza, we want hot. 450, that's our maximum temperature. We can go as low as 140 for holding food warm, but the max we're going is 450. We're going to preheat the oven. Yes, we're starting, and in a few minutes, we'll be ready to bake. All right, our convection oven is preheated to 450 degrees, so our pizzas are ready to go in. Now, we're using a homemade dough. We made this here. If you use a store-bought dough, it's going to work great. So our dough, not quite so round. I think mine's kind of taken on the shape of, like, Texas, I believe. I, you know. Yeah, and to cover my tracks, I always say, the imperfections make the masterpiece, Brian. All so right. So I'll take the top rack. All right, Joe's going on top. I'm going to go on the bottom. Now, I'm on a rotating rack on the bottom, so my pizza's gonna get nice and evenly brown. The top rack, not rotating. So maybe every couple of minutes, you might wanna go in there and rotate it a quarter turn just to make sure you get a nice, even browning. Now, it's gonna ask us to select the bake time. Joe's already put in 10 minutes. It may take a little longer, but we'll check it at 10, and we can always add a little more time. So now we're ready to go. So I'm gonna press start. And we're in baking. 10 minutes. We'll have pizza. Yeah. All right, these pizzas are done. Let's take a look. Oh, they smell good. Now mine has beautiful caramel cheese, perfectly brown crust, and it's done all the way through. All the way through, they're gonna be crunchy. Let's set these guys here, let them rest for a couple of minutes. We'll slice them, ready to snack. All right, we've cooked a lot of food, and we have made Quite a mess. We have, Brian, but luckily, we've got a stainless steel cabinet in here that makes it easy to clean. And you have to allow this to cool down a little bit before you can go in with some hot and soapy water. That's all we need to clean it. All right, Joe, cover me. I'm going in. <laughs> with your Advanium oven, you'll get one metal grill tray two metal trays, and for your microwave, a glass tray. You're also gonna get a metal rack that's great for convection baking and proofing and warming. But if one of these don't accommodate what you need, you can always use a non-metal casserole dish to do your cooking. So if you got any other questions about the cookware you can use with your Advanium, or maybe some questions that a couple of cooks haven't been able to answer for you, you can refer to the use and care manual that comes with your Advanium oven. sophistication takes a bold and innovative turn with new induction cooktops available in two distinct designs. With one of the most powerful elements in the industry, these cooktops captivate with magnetic performance and presence. So what is induction? We're here in the kitchens of the Monogram Experience Center. This is where we work. But we're here to talk about this, the induction cooktop. Now, induction uses uh, magnetic energy to transform the pan into the actual cooking surface. As you're about to see, it's incredibly powerful and very different from all the other cooking technologies. I love this demonstration, I gotta tell cool. you. This is a pan with a clear view on one side, and we're gonna get this heating up. Now that we come to the boil, the cool thing about induction is, you know, the pan is the part that's heating, not the cooktop. So this cooktop over here, perfectly cool. Let's put it through its paces and see how it performs with real food. Here's what I'm suggesting. I'm throwing down the gauntlet. It's a challenge. I think we can make a dish and be eating it 
before our water even comes to a boil on our gas cooktop. Everybody loves a great pasta dish. We've got some things to build flavor with. The key ingredients are the garlic, and we've got some gel bacon. We're gonna cut some of that up. We need to start building flavor. Gel bacon's a great way to start. We're at a good temperature here. We're at nine, we're gonna start stirring our bacon. Any dish without bacon is not a dish to me, let me tell you. <laughs> and it's all about building flavor. We're gonna get the first layer in. You know, there's a little smoke to this. And we want to build some caramel on this bacon, so we're just going to kind of leave that alone. All right, while you're doing that, I've got some marinara. Use that, we're going to bring that up to temperature over here. Why don't you grab the rest of those ingredients and we'll get going on there. You got it. We got a little mushroom, a little carrot, a little red onion. Right. Of course, the dal bacon, broccoli. Don't forget the garlic. Don't, don't the garlic. forget the garlic. Can't have a good pasta dish without garlic. Beautiful thing. Garlic burns pretty quickly, so we'll get the rest of the ingredients in. And it's gonna shock that temperature down just a little bit, but you'll see it recover very quickly as well. We'll get some carrots. Uh, it's smelling good in here. Yeah, nice. Oh. See how quickly that recovers? Hey, we already, we're already up to a boil here. Got a little splatter effect going over here with the marinara. Got the broccoli going in. Grab that cream, Brian. Yep. A little heavy cream. How much more fat can we add to this dish? We love it. Now we're really gonna let this skillet have it. We're gonna add cold cream to it. We'll watch it, it'll just kinda stop sauteing for just a moment. Watch how quick this comes back, Brian. It's amazing. It is. And what I like is we're not getting hot everywhere. We can set this on the cooktop because we're just heating the pan. Right. So you can see already our cream's out of boil that quick. We're gonna go ahead and season with a little salt and pepper. Black pepper. Fresh ground black pepper. What does that do, Brian? Adds flavor to the party. We're almost to a boil here. Just another minute or two, we're ready to cook our pasta. We'll add the cheese. Again, it's, watch it, it'll shock it down just for a second. And look out back. I mean, it doesn't even shock it down. It's, it's amazing. It, yeah, it never ceases to amaze me. So now that we've got the cheese in there, we can turn it down and just let this simmer while the pasta's cooking. And we get the responsiveness of gas. We just lost our boil just like that, down to the whole simmer. And that sauce is pretty much ready to go. That's a good looking dish. Right. We've got a lot of cream and cheese going here. We want to kind of cut it with some marinara, something acidic, right? A little marinara. So on, we grab a little of this marinara and we'll just kind of dribble it over our pasta. We've also got a little uh, red pepper tomato mix here just to kind of help. A little finish the dish. It'll be beautiful. You know, no torture here. It's just about great flavor and good methods. I say we get a couple forks and just eat because there's no need for plates, not in this kitchen. We never wait to get those plates out anyway. Do we? <laughs> no, we don't. Let's oh. check the water in the back. I'd say we're miles away from a simmer, I gotta be honest. Well, we have a finished dish here. I think now we could probably even clean up before we even come to a boil over there. Brian, we've made quite a mess here. We've done it again. I mean, we got bacon grease, we got marinara, we got pasta water and all this. But here's the nice thing. We get that little pasta out of the way. Little uh, wet soapy rag, a couple of wipes. You know, I'm just not used to this. I was so used to stuff being burned on my ranges and it took days. You had to schedule to clean these things. Now <laughs> we're just wiping it off. A real important fact about using induction cooktop is do you have the right cookware? And the way you find out is it's gotta be high ferrous, magnetic, Get a magnet. Ferris, that's just a technical term. We're just simple cooks here. It's magnetic, all right? So this a will magnet work. magnet stick. It's gonna work. Now the cooktop, you're looking for a pan that will cover two thirds of the eye if you're getting ready to use it. So we're gonna cover that. That would work. Now if you would turn one on, Brian, go ahead and get that small pan. All right. We'll fire that up. We're covering two thirds. What's happening now? We're heating up. Right. But it's what happens if I take it away? 
that says, wait a minute, wait, I'm not heating because there's nothing there. It's going to give you about 30 seconds to get back in gear and get cooking. There it is. It's back. It says I'm heating. All right, so here's the question, though. We've got uh, Ferris pans here. What if I got a Ferris spoon and I lay it on the on the burner there accidentally? Well, then what? It's not going to cover two thirds. It's not going to notice it, really. If it's not being noticed, it's not heating up. What a product. Very efficient. Hi, I'm Chef Joe Castro. I'm Chef Brian Logston. What a beautiful day to be outside. We spend so much time in the kitchens, we finally get to come out and we get to cook on the new Monogram Grill. Now we've been a little spoiled because when we cook inside, the design of Monogram looks so good and they've brought it outside now, Brian. That they have. You know, just stand back and take a look at this thing. I mean, 304 stainless steel, heavy gauge, it's a beast, right? It's manly. A lot of the things that we love about the design inside, we got chamfered edges, tubular steel handles. See that uh, thermometer down there? Right. Where are they usually? They're up in here somewhere. When you open it up, it gets lost. We put ours right down here in front. Excellent. Now, this guy is big. 304 stainless is going to be heavy. I've been working out a little bit. Why don't you let me lift this lid for you because I know it's going to be heavy, all right? <laughs> usually that's about 40 pounds, but because of our unique design we have in here with the counterbalance spring, it's really easy to use. You can really use it really one or two fingers you're ready to go excellent check this out brian we've got heliarc welded seams now seams are usually bad when you're doing a grill because grease and moisture can get in there and cause problems there's not a fastener on this that you can see now earlier today yes because i knew you were coming i went ahead and got a prime rib fired up brian. i i know we have a prime rib and uh i'm ready to go i got a knife and uh let's let's slice a piece off all let's right take a look Hand me that mop over there. Let me mop it a little bit. All right. So what are we mopping with here? This is just the dripping straight from the prime rib. So you we can get do a this pan underneath? Yeah. Just catch all the drippings and baste with that? They include this pan with it. That's really cool. Excellent. You could do lamb. You could do pork shoulders, chickens. I mean, think of the amount of chicken you get on there. I could feed my entire family with yeah, this Yeah, we got thing. a lot to cook. But right now, uh, <laughs> let's get in. All right? All right. Why don't you go ahead and turn that motor off down there. You got it. Carve you off the slice. I know you've got your side lid, but I need to light mine. You just push in, listen to it click, and this will be heating up, getting ready to go. All right, I got the brats. Let's break those out. We're going to need more than just mustard for brats, though. So while I put these on, what do you got? Well, Brian, in my book, you got to have some peppers and onions. Now, they've got these new fangled saute pans for the grill, and I've got this over the ceramic burner, and I'm just going to toss these up. Isn't that cool? Kind of fun, right? All right, that ought to be enough to take care of the boys. All right, we've got our brats on. It's about ready to turn them. And, you know, the brats, they're not too bad, but if you get some burgers, things like that, where you got a lot of grease, you need a good grease trap. And we got one. Perfect for catching all that grease, easy cleanup. Now, I'm ready to turn these. We got our burner on there. What else are we going to cook? Well, we've got some chicken wings, jerk chicken wings. We marinated these. They've been going for a couple days, right? That's right. About 24 hours at least. Really get that island flavor on there. Excellent. Brian, these chicken wings taste great just by themselves, but if you want a little extra zest, we got a smoker over there, don't we? Yeah, we do. All right, so if you're going to use a smoke box, all you got to do is lift the lid. You can add your wood chips, your beer or wine. Now, it's got to go under the grate on top of the infrared burner because we get a lot of high heat there, and that's what we need when we're trying to smoke and add a little bit of flavor to this food. All right, brats are ready. Well, we need to keep them warm, and we've got this rack that kind of stores out of the way, but if you need it, just drop it down. Why don't you set those up there, Brian? All right, we can set these up out of the way. The wings are ready. I've got some corn we put together earlier. We blanched it, and then we put it in a little bondage. We tied it up with some bacon butter bacon, inside. <laughs> bacon butter. So what this does is it gives you a lot of time. All you got to do is warm it up for your guest. And it embraces every kernel of corn with what, Brian? Bacony goodness. <laughs> Corn's looking good. I think it's about time to plate up some lunch. What do you think? I'm hungry. Let's have some lunch, my friend. Let's have some lunch, and then we check out the pool. <laughs> Now, 
Now at lunch, Brian, we had a lot of power in here. We've got three burners, stainless steel burners, that are 25,000 BTUs that we cooked on earlier. Our infrared burner is 23,000 BTUs. That's a lot of power. And we used a rotisserie, 14,000 BTUs. All a lot of power, but the cool thing about this, you gotta be adjustable, right? And I've got some pork loins that are wrapped in banana leaves, and we gotta be low and slow on those. Right. So I'm gonna turn it down. Brian, why don't you set a couple right there and we'll get those started. You got it. Now, give me those steaks over here, Brian. These are not just steaks. These are two inch New York age strips. All right. We're going on the infrared burner. You got why it. are we gonna do that? Well, we wanna sear these guys on the outside. We gotta have some very, very high heat. We want that crust to be built on there and that will allow us to keep all the juices inside the beef. It's gonna be nice. You wipe up. What's cool about this whole cooking system is, you know, it's got everything we need. Nice trash cans, even got a rubber gasket. Pretty cool. Surf and turf, so we got some lobster tails. And I don't know how big a lobster this came off of, but these, these are some big tails. Now, whenever you get a grill working this hard, you're gonna need something to go along with it, my friend. We need some side dishes. After that, we've got some good old fashioned cheese grits. And we've also got a stir fry. We're gonna do just some basic vegetables with a little soy, ginger, and garlic. It's gonna be great with all of this stuff here. So you man the grill, I'll take care of the sides. All right, so I've already preheated these two burners here. And what's nice about these two side burners is we've got a burner that'll flip over and we can make it hold our wok. So we're gonna do a little stir fry and we're gonna make some grits. So we're already preheated. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by getting one of our favorite things, a little bacon fat in this pan. Now we're very, very hot here and I'm gonna add some onions and I'm just gonna get them to start sauteing. All right, now while those start to cook, let's go ahead and get our stir fry going. Got a little olive oil. We're seeing some smoke, we're nice and hot. So we're gonna add a little onion to that. Now to our stir fry, we're gonna add a little red pepper. We've got some chipotles. I'm gonna add that. We're gonna bring a little heat to our grits. And we like that smokiness. Now this is looking real good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some water, some mushrooms, and we got a little sweet chili sauce. Just give it a little sweetness. And that moisture is gonna help our stir fry to finish cooking. So while these finish cooking, Let's check and see how Joe's doing on the grill. It's getting a little dark over here, Brian. Yeah, it is getting a little dark. What are we gonna do about it? Why don't we just turn the lights on? We've got two halogen low voltage lights here. And if you can see, we got a little red LED so we can see all of our knobs and controls very easily. Very nice. All right, so that stir fry looks good. I added a little bit of garlic and some ginger to this. And we're gonna finish it just a little parsley, just give it a little color. So I'm just gonna set this aside. So I've got uh, two cups of grits here, so that means we got eight cups of water in there. We're gonna stir these in. While those grits are finishing up, I wanna plate this up. And I'm always finding myself running back and forth. We're lucky to have these drawers around, Brian. Why don't you go ahead and give me a platter? That's right, everything's right here at your fingertips. Got a platter for you. The grits are ready. I'll go ahead and start uh, plat plattering those up for you. I'll go ahead and get some of this beef off the grill. I've let this beef rest about 10 minutes. That looks like enough for me. That's a meal right there. <laughs> well, we've had quite a day of cooking, Brian. We threw a lot at this grill. We started at lunch, 11 o'clock. We had the rotisserie going with a little prime rib. Finished that with a little bit of bratwurst chicken wings and then we fired up some corn. Then we came back for dinner. So we did some searing with the New York strips there on the infrared burner. We did some low and slow with those pork wrapped in banana leaves, lobster tails, which were just divine. And then with the side burners, we did some grits and some stir fry with that wok. It's been a great day. I say we meet back here 11 o'clock tomorrow. Let's do it all again. I'm all for that. And I like this grill so much. My greatest way to show my approval put it in the truck and take it to my house. All right, I'll help you load it All up. All right.
Brian, I've got a little grin on my face. It's because we're making shrimp scampi. Now this goes back a long ways with me. I don't know why it's something fun to cook, but it is. It was taught to me by Marion Vic Parlanti and Jim Amato, and I'm gonna pull it out after about 30 years. All right, the first thing we're gonna need to do is dread some shrimp. So let's get these shrimp and a little bit of all-purpose flour. We're just gonna give these a nice little dusting, nothing crazy. Just dust them up, so use your tongs or your hands and we're gonna put that nice coat on them. We're gonna saute these at medium high heat, so I'm gonna take this to seven and a half and allow my skillet to get hot. Our olive oil's hot, we can now saute, so now let's gently add our shrimp to this olive oil. We're looking for a golden brown, let's turn that over, there we go. And once we get these turned over, we just wanna make sure they're fully cooked. All right, let's take our shrimp and set them on a plate. Just let them kind of relax, but we want to keep them warm. And as you can see, we've got a lot of flavor left in this skillet, so we're going to make a sauce from all that good stuff. So let's put it back on the heat. Let's add a little bit of garlic. Now garlic will burn, so we need to just cook that for about 10 to 15 seconds. And before it burns, we're going to add our white wine to deglaze. At that point, I want you to turn your heat down to medium. Turn it down just a little bit, and we're going to add our red pepper flakes, our butter, Kind of work that in. We've got some Worcestershire sauce, something that a lot of us don't think to put in there. Let's add it, cook it out a little bit. Capers are very big. Let's get a little caper in there. And it wouldn't be scampi without some lemon. Now, now I've got a lemon here. I've got a zester. We're gonna put the zest, that outer skin, that lemon in this dish. Okay, just a little bit. A lot of flavor in that. Then the juice of half a lemon will squeeze right in there as well. To finish our scampi, we're gonna add some tomatoes to this. This isn't traditional, but I love that fresh acidity from the tomato. And some fresh parsley, you gotta do that. Now we seasoned the shrimp earlier, but we need to check this sauce for, you know, salt and pepper. Let's see where we're at. We've got our sauce, now let's plate it. So I've got a bed of rice. I love rice, you could use pasta. We've got our shrimp, and we're gonna put this sauce right on top. You know, all that sauce on bottom stuff, whatever. I like it right on top where it belongs, on the food. Shrimp scampi. It's quick, it's easy, and boy, it's got a history.